details, just like every country has its secrets. And in life, sometimes we come face to face with buried treasure. But if you don't know the whereabouts of the treasure, do you bother digging? So I suggest it takes a true visionary to dig, because most of us would just give up. Now, I grew up in South Africa, and every child who did uh, heard the bedtime story of the Kruger Millions. So I'll catch you up. I'll give you about 30 seconds <laughs> of a history lesson, just so we're all on the same page. In the 1600s, the Dutch settled Cape Town as a halfway point for ships coming from Indonesia carrying precious loads of spices. And the colony consisted mostly of farmers and religious refugees, their pacifists fleeing prosecution from Europe. And uh, the English eventually decided that they would annex this area. And when they did so, the Dutch decided that they would pack their things up and trek further north. So when they did this, they settled on the world's largest diamond vein. And pretty soon, the English were like, yeah, we'll, we'll take that as well. So um, when the English invaded the next area, the Orange Free State, the Dutch again packed all their goods up and trekked further up. This time, they settled in an area now called Gauteng, which means the city of gold. And literally, there was gold in every single hill around where they settled. Again, the English annexed this. But this time, the Dutch had to fight. There was no more. Uh, they couldn't go further. They were at the edge of the Zulu territory. And the farmers uh, decided they had, had to fight starting the Boer War. Now, their president, Paul Kruger, declared that if the English breached the defense of their capital, Pretoria, that they would put all the gold and diamonds that they, would, that they had mined onto a train and send it out hide it somewhere in the countryside until after the war. And in 1900, this exact situation came to pass. Dutch commandos fought at the periphery of the city and gave the government just enough time to load all the bullion onto a train. But they didn't just load one train. In fact, they loaded three. One train contained the shadow government. The other train contained all the bullion and all the diamonds that they had gotten out of the ground. And the third train departed with great fanfare in the exact opposite direction, as a decoy. Now, the English eventually caught hold of this, and they understood what was going on. And when the Dutch figured it out, they decided that they would take the gold, load it onto wagons, and push these wagons into the countryside to hide it somewhere else. The wagons were accompanied by five commandos who hid the gold in a, in a dried up well. And they put a dog carcass on top that they found nearby, and then loaded the wagon with rocks. The next day, the British Army captured the five commandos and summarily executed the five last remaining people who knew the whereabouts of the gold. So that's basically the bedtime story. Now, my grandfather owned a, a farm near where these people were executed. And since he was young, he remembered people coming up and asking his father whether they could dig on the land. He always said no. But this became such an issue that when the family left for church, they would come back and find holes dug up in their property. So when my grandfather was 16, he went to retrieve a lost sweater that he forgot outside, and it was twilight with both the sun and the moon in the sky, and he found, standing, leaning against the railing, a guy with a long trench coat, smoking a pipe. And when he asked this guy, what are you doing here? The man turned around, pale and wan, and said, I'm here guarding Uncle Paul's gold. So when my grandfather fetched his family, uh, uh, at least some of them came out in time to see this man disappear in a flash. So was this the ghost of a spectral soldier killed before? Possibly. When my grandfather came of age, he decided that he would dig. And he remembered that his grandfather told him about a dried up well that he had turned into a rock garden. So he started there. They started digging. They found some tools. They found a belt buckle. And then they found some bones. Now, the workers, when they saw the bones, quit immediately, saying that this is desecration of graves. So my grandfather hired a new set of workers, chose a different spot, and started digging again. And in this new location, they did find two solid gold 1898 Kruger Mint coins, which inspired them to dig further. They dug really deep. They got to about 12 feet when the walls of the pit started becoming unsteady, and the workers gave up because of safety concerns. Now, they never did find the hoard. They certainly found traces of it, but the, the gold just seemed out of touch. And years later, before my grandfather died, I asked him about his most cherished memories. And he told me digging for the gold was one of them. He said that when he was digging, it wasn't digging earth, it wasn't digging soil, but it was digging through history. And that 
Searching for buried treasure requires determination and curiosity, but most importantly, faith. Faith in yourself. And it was these characteristics that my grandfather employed later in life to become a very successful businessman. Now, what I learned from this is that um, with any, sometimes the outcome is not as important as just committing the action. And any determined action requires belief in yourself. So I hope that they never find this gold. I hope that the gold forever remains a fairy tale. Paul Kruger, the president, did go to Switzerland. And there he, he implored, implored other heads of faith, or sorry, heads of state, to, uh, to make an independent Dutch state in Africa. He wrote letters and organized expats. And in 1904, when, just before he died, he wrote an open letter to all the, the Dutch farmers. And he said in this letter, look to the past for all that is golden and good, and use it as an ideal to build your own future. Now, I hope that the gold is still there, somewhere, because every once in a while, a farmer will plow the field and, and pull up a couple of gold coins. But, and this will start a gold rush for the, the missing $250 million in gold that's somewhere hidden there. But I hope it stays a mystery. And I hope that the gold will forever inspire a generation of treasure hunters to learn that with determination and curiosity and faith that you can become a visionary. Thank you.